Okay, Chris, well, let's turn to your first two contributions to the series. There is a third that we'll, we'll get to, but your first two um, are on Jacques Derrida, and uh, you'll have to forgive me for not pronouncing his name with a French accent. I know that you will, but uh, you know, I'm just the, 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 the dumb English guy living in America who can pronounce these names correctly. But anyway, Jacques Derrida. <laughs> It, it's and funny. Go. Can I just? It's funny you say that, James, because I had an undergraduate lecturer who insisted on the fact that in English it's not Derrida, it's Derrida, yeah. Uh, yeah. and that that each language has its own pronunciation. So you're absolutely consistent uh, with what I was taught. Okay. All right. Sounds a little relativistic, but but I'll I'll, I'll roll with it. Okay. And then uh, Michel Foucault. But we'll we'll hold him back for uh, for a second while we uh, focus on Derrida for a moment, because this was the, yeah. the first um, uh, book in that, that you wrote for the series. Now, why 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 Derrida? Uh, why uh, were you interested to contribute a book to this series on Derrida? Yeah, I I think it's largely to do with the the extent of his influence an impact both within academia and more broadly on the way that people think uh, and the reflexes that people have faced with different situations today. Um, so within academia, the, one can pick up pretty quickly any number of quotations saying he's the most significant philosopher of the second half of the 20th century and so forth. And for what they're worth, quotations like that do begin to paint a picture of someone who has had a significant impact, uh, or at least is perceived to have had at least a significant impact on the way that we think. Um, he engages with important fundamental questions. He's, he's in that sense radical. The, the level at which he's seeking to, uh, to engage with the way that we think is, is at the root of everything. So, for example, the, the relationship between truth and meaning or between meaning and language has implications for all fields of, of human endeavor. Um, he's uh, got uh, important things to say about ethics and the way in which we think of the world in terms of the lenses of good and evil. Um, and again, that, that runs deep and wide in the way that we organize our society, in the way that we engage with the world as individuals. And of course, he's got a deal to say about God as well, which is, um, uh, as we would no doubt both agree, fundamental uh, to what it means yeah, it's pretty important. to be human. Um, he's also incredibly prolific and broad. Um, in researching the Great Thinkers book, I dug up about 86, it was, I think, book-length treatments of Derrida. So Derrida and architecture, Derrida and zoology and everything in between. Um, so his, his thought can be set to work across the whole gamut of human endeavor. Um, and I think he's, he's important also for what he tells us perhaps about the tribalism of contemporary academia. You know of, and I mentioned in the book, the what's called the Cambridge Affair, the way in mm -hmm. which um, in 1992, I think it was, he was um, under great protest, uh, awarded an honorary degree at Cambridge, and, and that how, how that really split the academic body between those who considered him essentially an intellectual terrorist, a charlatan, uh, mm -hmm. who the, the, the quote at the time was like the Dadaists want to, wants to do nothing but wreck the academy. Um, and those who, by contrast, including the people who, who taught me as an undergraduate, said, for goodness sake, this is a real philosopher. Just read him. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that tells us something interesting um, about the contemporary academic climate as well. So for all those reasons, I think he's a really important thinker.